The Grumman F7F Tiger Cat takes off in War Thunder. Let's have a look. The F7F was originally envisioned as a high altitude, long range, high speed carrier based fighter interceptor, and the XF7F1 prototype first flew in 1943, with the initial impressions being highly positive. Test pilots fell in love with the plane, and its performance far exceeded the other piston-engined aircraft they had exposure to. The problem was, this was a big plane, and it initially ended up being unsuitable for the carrier operations it was originally planned for. As a result, it ended up being operated entirely from land bases when it was first introduced into service as the F-7F1, but it was still regarded very favorably by its pilots. The armament was heavy, it was noticeably faster than other aircraft they had flown, and it had an excellent rate of climb, which was a major requirement. The subsequent F-7F3 was modified and more suitable for carrier use and ended up being the main production run of the Tiger Cat. A block of night fighters was also produced, which were equipped with the APS-6 radar set, but unfortunately we don't get that version in War Thunder. The F-7F entered service a bit too late to see any combat during World War II, but was still in active service when the Korean War broke out a few years later. The plane was used pretty extensively in the early part of the war, taking advantage of its long range, but in the end it saw very little combat. Its only air-to-air -air action was engaging and shooting down a couple of PO-2 biplanes. The F-7F is generally considered one of the best piston-engined fighters to ever fly, and was among the fastest. After it was retired from military service in 1954, very few remained airworthy, but a couple found themselves serving as firefighting water bombers, and at least two have been used in air racing over the years. What we have in War Thunder are two versions of the basic design. The F7F1 in the American tech tree, and the premium F7F3, which was a reward from the summer event back in 2016. Both are in rank 4 at battle rating 6.7. They're classed as interceptors, so both planes get the interceptor air spawn in realistic battles. Unfortunately, we don't get the APS-6 radar that a couple versions of the plane had, but we do get some chonky firepower. The F-7F carries four 20mm cannons and four more 12.7mm machine guns for a total one-second burst mass of over 9 kilograms. The ammo belts you get for the guns aren't really anything special, you've seen it all before, but you still get enough options to match your personal playstyle, whatever that happens to be. Aiming the guns is pretty easy, as all of them are either right in the nose or on the inner edge of the wing roots, so basically all of your firepower is right on the center line. For loadouts, the Tech Tree Tiger Cat can take some bombs, but the premium version gets bombs, naval mines, and unguided rockets, including the legendary Tiny Tim. These things pack an enormous punch with a huge 67 kilogram warhead, but they're pretty difficult to aim. For whatever reason, I never have good luck trying to fire them off this plane, but a few of the other earlier props that carry it don't really give me any trouble. No idea why. Anyway, it's a huge rocket that hits really hard. Now, the flight performance of the F-7F is excellent for a prop fighter. The overall speed is very high, the rate of climb is good, and it holds energy well through an initial maneuver, especially coming out of a low-angle dive. But, being a twin-engined prop, its overall dogfight maneuverability is only average, and most single-engined prop fighters will be able to outturn this one in a sustained dogfight. Like with a lot of other planes that are broadly in the super prop category, flying out into air battles often involves an initial climb and 
trying to maintain your altitude advantage, that is, your energy advantage, as long as possible. If you get down-tiered, you might be able to use some boom and zoom tactics for the entire match, but if you end up fighting jets, which is going to happen pretty often, you may end up having to fly a lot more defensively, which guts your energy state very fast. The good news is that with the F7F's heavy firepower, bringing down targets isn't especially difficult if you can get just a couple of hits on them. The bad news is, most of the planes you end up flying against, including a lot of the entry-level jets, are going to have the advantage in a one-on-one -on -one turning fight. A special note about doing boom and zoom with the Tiger Cat, try to avoid diving straight down or going too far into the red with your airspeed. The plane suffers control compression at high speeds, and it'll rip its wings at a little over 830 kilometers an hour. So if you're not careful, you could end up as a lawn dart or missing a chunk of your plane because you dove in too aggressively. Flying ground attack is definitely possible, but in realistic air battles, the extra weight of the ordnance is a pretty big disadvantage, and even with this plane's decent speed, you'll be intercepted before you can attack ground targets more often than not. Flying close air support is also possible, and frankly, it's pretty fun. This is a large target though, so just be mindful of well-aimed anti-air guns. If you can get good at aiming the Tiny Tim rockets, or frankly, if you can just get lucky with them, they pack a serious punch, and the bombs on the F-7F aren't bad either. This isn't a dedicated ground pounder, but it's competent enough as close air support. Visually, I've always liked the looks of twin-engine prop fighters, and this is easily one of the best-looking ones. It's got clean lines, a nice tapered shape, and the dark blue paint job you get on both versions just looks amazing big fan of the visuals on the F7F. Landing this one isn't too bad. A noteworthy caveat, you can drop gear at a much higher speed than your landing flaps, so just be mindful of that and don't rip your flaps off on final approach. It has a tricycle landing gear, so no risk of nosing over when you hit the brakes, though. Overall, pretty good landing performance. Now, the cockpit is great, with excellent visibility, but most of the instruments are a little lower than I'd prefer, and, kind of awkwardly, the TechTree F7F1 has a radar scope for the radar set that the plane doesn't have. So, whoops. The premium F7F3 just has a blank spot where the scope would be. Overall, though, it's an okay cockpit. To close out on the Grumman F7F Tiger Cat. This plane has pretty heavy firepower, adequate external weapons, good speed and climb performance, and the premium version can take sea mines. However, the overall maneuverability isn't competitive with most single engine fighters that it faces. The engines are a little prone to overheating and it hits the red line very quickly in anything beyond a shallow dive. The final verdict on the F7F is that this plane has most of the strengths and weaknesses of other twin-engine prop fighters, but the strengths are a tad bit stronger, and if you're a fan of this particular playstyle, this is arguably the best one in the game right now. With a little practice, this is a very fun plane to fly. As always, thanks for watching. Thank you.